Welcome to another episode of the Bald Guys on the Bench podcast with your hosts, Graham Cohen and Scott Wasco. What's up, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Bald Guys on the Bench, a sports podcast for the everyday fan by the everyday fan. And like we always do, Scott, when rambling together about sports, you know what time it is. It's time to grab one and crack one, bro. Let's go. Let's do it. And you know what the best part of this is? For What's our that? followers on YouTube, they get to see me break this out for the first time on the podcast. <laughs> Let's go, baby. And for those now, see, that, now I'm feeling left out. Hold on. Now you make me feel left out. For those that don't watch on YouTube, what I'm showing up is a koozie that says 2023 Stanley Cup champions. You're welcome. So I grabbed it and cracked it. Where are you at, Graham? It's all right. Oh, oh I like it. Oh, I like oh, it. got one of these bad boys. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Don't care. Crack your beer. <laughs> wow. Got him. Wow. Let's, <laughs> let's. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's just get that started right away. <laughs> so uh, it's Sunday night. Travelers ended today. Like we said last week in the podcast, we got to experience our first week of what everybody calls the dog days of summer because all we've got out there right now is baseball and golf. And if you're a Mets fan like myself, all we've got is golf. So (laughs) (laughs) we'll get to that later. I mean, I don't even want to start with that. So how was your weekend? What would you do? Anything fun? I mean, I know you were. Oh. I had a thrilling weekend of work, although I will say this. It only took until the last week of June for it to be sunny and over 70 degrees in in, in L.A., so yay! Oh. I mean... <laughs> yeah, same here in Virginia. We, everybody was whining about, oh, it's so cool, it's so cool, and then wham, bam, okay, it's 90 degrees and 85% humidity yesterday. Y'all are really complaining that we didn't have that? Like, seriously? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, don't miss that. Oof. I can't even walk outside and walk the dog without sweating. <laughs> like, come on, people. <laughs> Sheesh. Come on, now you don't walk the dog. You open the back door. Don't lie. Yeah, I know, but I was trying to you know, <laughs> act like I walked the dog. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, pretty low key weekend for me. What about you, bro? I was off Saturday, Sunday. You know, I've been working like crazy. And Kristen and I went and saw Revolution last night, reggae band down at Virginia Beach Amphitheater. That's right. uh, dude, we're literally walking in and this storm is fastly approaching. And I'm like, oh my gosh, thank God our seats are covered. And I think I sent you a Snapchat and I'm like, oh God, it looks like a war is breaking out behind me. If you remember, I know you were at work, so you probably didn't get to study it. But, you know, of course they're supposed to come out on, at 920 on stage at 920. You know, it's thunder and lightning. And I'm like, oh dude, are they going to cancel this thing? Like I'm bummed. Right. And they come out, do the whole dangerous weather. You know, I sent you the picture. So, you know, granted, I got these tickets, their seats, and it's covered, but it was the Live Nation concert week. So it's $25 seats. So beggars can't be choosy. Right. So I'm literally row X. There's, we're right at the end. And yeah. I'm like, even though we're covered, I'm like, guaranteed the wind's going to blow. We're going to get wet. So, you know, thank God they, canceled they postponed it for a little while we got to walk up a little bit and not get soaking wet but here's the kicker dude it's (laughs) it stopped raining and they hadn't said what time they're going to come on and i'm like all right well i gotta go to the bathroom and i need to get a couple more beers well because it was a weather delay no alcohol sales (laughs) and i'm like what and i'm like yeah i guess that makes sense you know because They might be kicking us out of here in two minutes and canceling the concert. You know, I get it. So anyhow, show finally started about a half hour late. You know, the Virginia Beach Amphitheater has a noise ordinance. They got to be off the stage at 11. So we missed out on half hour music. Whatever, dude. Don't care. I've seen them 50 times. It was still a fun show. We got lucky we didn't get soaked. And, you know, today I didn't do much, dude. Watched a little golf, hoping our boy R squared was going to throw another 60 at him today on the bag. But so that didn't happen. I mean, it's hard to back up a, a 60. So uh, but we'll get into that in a few minutes. I mean, I mean you know, yeah. 10 under. Yeah, right. One uh, round is pretty decent, no? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but uh, we got some NBA news before we start getting into the golf world. And, 
you know, we had the draft, we had a couple trades, you know, Graham is our resident, you know, NBA guy. So the stage is yours, my friend. I, hey, for dog days of summer, boys, not used to leading off with NBA to start these podcasts. So let's go with that. We got big news. Um, obviously the Mets are. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we might have a special a little a special something about these Mets later, so we'll see. Or hoping, at least. <clears throat> yeah, but getting back to it. The draft, obviously, not too many surprises. You know, Victor, what, I know I've said this correctly before, but when Benyama uh, whatever. from France, you know, from France, <laughs> obviously, you know, they call him the second coming of the Lord himself, apparently. Like, this is a guy that was graded better than LeBron coming out, so... I mean, what what kind of yeah. shoes does that guy got to fill? Uh, I'll that, tell you like, what he need, I'll tell you what he needs to fill, <laughs> and that's eating some steak and potatoes because my boy <laughs> needs to put on some weight because he ain't filling yeah. out his uniform. Dude, you know, you know, it's funny you said you say that. Yeah. I was watching some interviews and they basically were saying that his team basically said that they are comfortable with where his weight is because that's he's just so used to playing at that weight that for how agile he is that he it, it's one of those it's like the opposite of our boy uh, Williamson from uh, from Duke or from Zion or from Zion, yeah. Zion Williamson yeah. the opposite from him where it's just like hey man maybe lose 15 20 five ish and uh, be better or this guy, you know, put on, you know, put on 20 it's it, it, you could get arguments both sides, whether it help or not. So we'll just see what happens after this first year. And uh, cause look, he's, he's been playing European ball. So it's not like he hasn't been getting, you know, practice with larger athletes. Anyway, granted the European league is not the NBA. I get that. I get that. But I mean, when was the last time you you saw a guy that was seven, four and was handling the rock, you know, from baseline to baseline, popping up three pointers and, you know, still blocking shots. So you're not, you're it's not wrong. You're not wrong. It's basically but... Yao Ming with the jumper. <sighs> More athletic version of Yao Ming. Oh yeah. yeah, hundred percent. hundred percent. I, I so, just, I just, all I can do is, you know, I, I'm not a big NBA guy, but this dude right. to me, I, I, in my mind, I'm just visualizing, and I'm not even going to talk about the biggest players in the, in the NBA. I'm just going to say Draymond Green, who's a physical. Yeah. You know, he his he makes his money by being physical. He's going to battle. He's going to. I I I don't know. I hope I'm wrong. Oh, he's going to put something on him. Ajax can't take off. <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm just saying. What? I'm just saying. I can't. I just. I, I don't know. But something that needs to be said. If if none of our listeners or followers or anybody saw it, he threw out the first pitch last week. Oh, bro! Before, the day day before the draft, I think. Whatever. Yeah, that, something like that. Draft week, and you sent me a picture, and I was just like, "Why is he sending me this picture?" And then I had to look at it, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. That's why he's sending me the picture. Dude, the way he palmed <laughs> that baseball, like, you couldn't even see the ball itself in his hand. His fingers were, like, overlapping <laughs> his wrist. Like, that's how much it is. And I was like, Jesus. It looked like he was holding a ping pong ball. Yeah. It, no, it <laughs> looked like you and I were trying. Yes, like, it would yes. look like us holding a yes. ping pong ball. Dude, imagine yes. him holding a ping <laughs> You mentioned him trying to play beer pong. Dude. <laughs> I mean, imagine calling elbows on him. He's, yeah. I mean, he's like foul, reaching foul. across the table. Yeah. He's like, foul. <laughs> he's like, yeah, um, just layups. Appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> so who's on your team? That guy. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I hope it works out. I don't. I'm glad he went to the Spurs. The Spurs are a great organization. I mean. Dude, how how lucky. Uh, right. For, for bo both. Both. For Both. the player, the franchise, small market. Dude, you know, you know their last the... two. You know the last two number ones that the Spurs took. Yeah, they were pretty good, and that was the Admiral and Tim Duncan. Yes, sir. Yeah. Wow, I got an NBA stat right. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, <laughs> what? But uh, well, one of the coolest things I thought, and you even pointed out to me again earlier tonight, was 
this year or a few days ago, I should say in the draft was the first time in any sport. Let's, let's say that again. The first time in any sport that a pair of brothers both got drafted in the top five, respectively in their draft, they went four and five. How crazy is that? It's like I told you after that happened, I turned the draft off. Oh yeah. I was like, don't care about anybody else. That's the coolest thing I'm going to see tonight. The end. I, bro, besides the dude that went number one, Victor Webb and Yama, right. I didn't, I didn't know any of these people coming out. So, I mean, right. I take the back. I knew a couple of the guys, yeah. but yeah. it's, I mean, it, the hype, I don't know. That's it's, it's not the hype. It's just different because of, you know, the G league, you know, guys skipping college, going to the G league. So you don't know them yep. as well. All the European players is, you know, you have to be really dialed in to go for that. Really, besides that offseason, the only big move, big keynote things to mention would be this. How about our boy Chris Middleton and Draymond Green, as of right now, have declined both of their player options? And the reason why I think that's a little shocking is because, oh, I don't know. Chris Middleton plays for the Milwaukee Bucks, was going to get forty point four million dollars. But he's like, nah, I decided to be an unrestricted free agent. You know, get that bag. Yeah. I'm like, you don't want to stay in Milwaukee. You don't want to, you know, redo a deal. Granted, he's unrestricted. They can still offer him. I'm not saying that he's not going to stay there. I was just kind of shocked by that. I, I mean, he's a he he. If people don't know how important Chris Middleton is to that team, then they don't they don't follow Milwaukee. That's for sure. The whole and then Draymond with his 26.7 million. What I'm hearing from around the league is. Yeah, he's looking to see what other teams might might he's pay, stay but there, dude. He's he stay needs there. to stay. He's too integral to that team, right? For everything that, I mean, how he works within the offense and defense, like he's one of those guys that, yeah, he may not pad the stats, but he's one of those guys that you just you need out there. You know, you need someone to you know, run the offense if someone's if a couple of them aren't shooting well. You need someone that knows what they're doing, the spots that the, that the team's defense is doing. Like, he's just, you know, he's a good morale guy. So, I, I mean, I fully expect him to stay with the Warriors. I wouldn't – like it's not like he needs the money. I mean, granted, if there's something I don't know about. So, if it's not really the money, and you've already played for them for 10-plus years right now or pretty close, if that is not – if that's not the case already, you already, you got your titles with them. Right off into the sunset, right? Oh, wow. I'm not, dude, I told you the other day, he's got to stay there. Right. He has to. He's the guy that's going to go down and get dirty. Oh, facts. Everybody needs that guy, right? And he's that guy for them. But real quick, as we were talking about the brothers getting drafted, it popped into my head. The last thing that I remember that was half as cool as that not even close to being first round back-to-back picks but pretty amazing were the upton brothers yeah and they're from my hometown here in chesapeake which is why it went ding 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 the first one went number two overall in the draft in the very next year the other one went number one overall in the draft (sighs) yeah that's I mean, that's just awesome. It's just, right. it's just, it's interesting. Different schools could still do it. They're still both still good. Like it's, it's, and they I mean, were, and they that... were, they were high school players. Yeah. The Upton yeah. brothers were high school players. I mean, Hey, but, it works. Yeah, um, right. I mean, so the only other really hello. And uh, Scott said, see you later. I'm looks like I'm pounding this beer by myself right now. The only other uh, news that's uh, well, I'd say I don't want to say earth shattering to me, but uh, my sons they were a part of a three a three way trade with the Wizards and the Pacers, and the main reason why I care is what are the Suns doing? Oh, here's an idea. Suns, they give up, or should I say, the Suns acquire Bradley Beal, Jordan Godwin, and Isaiah Todd I'm within back, this trade. Hey, let's go. I don't know where you went, but welcome back. That being said, the Wizards in that in the trade, they we give up Chris Paul, Landry Shamit, and then the rights to Bill. Oh, geez, I'm going to butcher that. Uh, we'll don't just say C. Try. 
<laughs> yeah, the uh, he went number seven. I ain't touching that. But then within that, they got the Suns' second round picks in 24, 5, 6, 7, and 30. And then the, we're swapping first round picks in the 24, 6, 8, and 30. And we're also giving up $3.5 million. I mean, what draft picks do the Suns have anymore? And then the Pacers, within the deal, get the rights to the eighth overall pick, Jairus Walker, and then the Suns. You know, give them their second round pick from 28 and the second round pick from 2029. We got no draft capital, but we got a p- couple players there. But dude, Bradley Beal waving his no trade clause to jump in, to to jump yeah. in this trade and cut co- and come over to Phoenix. Woo! Your boy yeah, is happy. But, yeah, but the thing that you complain about all season long is what depth. 100%. Look, it's not a midseason trade, but what I'll say is this. The rumblings in Phoenix are maybe they will keep DeAndre Aiden. I, well, I just saw I, today I, they're keeping him. Yeah. Okay, so. Who's going to give you what for that guy? He but was the, the number one overall pick four years ago, five years ago. But here's he's, a better question. He's a beast. Here's a better question. Here's a better question. Are the Wizards going to pay their fans to come to games? <laughs> is it is it going to be a situation where you get in the game free, and if they win, you have to pay this? <laughs> dude, especially... I, Dude, I... Well, there's no doubt now, the rebuild year is... <laughs> it's on. Jeez, dude. <laughs> it's, it, it's definitely on. I mean, I... Okay, let's be fair. Who was going the past two years? I don't my son, know. my son went to a game just to see the Kings. <laughs> uh, I just, I don't know, man. It's bad. No, I feel you. I feel you. But uh, yeah, what, so what that's, the, that's the that's the NBA to segment. The Warriors? Chris Paul. To oh the yeah, thank you. I, yeah. I mean, so they weren't going to keep them. They just did it for a salary dump Probably anyway. Did. And then they they and then so within that, the Warriors picked them up. I, look. I'm happy for him. I mean, I'd still love to see Chris Paul get a title. I mean, I would have rather him do it while he was with Phoenix. But here's the thing. When you get older, skills decline. I'm not saying that disrespectfully, but it's just like between all of his injuries, you know, knickknack injuries that he's had, he yeah. played a, I mean, he played a decent amount of the regular season, but when we needed him in the playoffs, what happened? Really? He was there no. barely half the time, and right. he was more... He, to be honest, he was really more of a floor general facilitator than he was right. someone that was there to knock down shots. Granted, the the offensive players that they have, we don't really need him to to knock down shots. But it's you know we'll we'll see what's what he, happens. We'll what's he gonna healthy? What's he gonna average? Fifteen and fifteen minutes a night on the Warriors? Yeah, mm, I'd probably say eighteen minutes. Okay, I'd say about eighteen yeah. minutes. Because, I mean, they'll still have Steph with the ball, though. I mean, he's basically replacing Jordan Poole. Right. So, you right. know what I mean? So I'd say about 18, maybe 22 minutes. But, I mean, he's one of those guys that you want a veteran guy come off the bench or maybe even start, but they'll switch him out, you know, every so Keep often. Keep yeah, I, and, and, and that's exactly what it's it is. Key. So, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I'm happy for him. I, 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 wish, I wish he could have got his title you know, with, with my sons, but it just, it is what it is, but the sun is shining. We got Bradley Beal now with Devin Booker, Deandre Aiden and Kevin Durant. And uh, now we just need, we need coach to basically tell the bench players to uh, step up and get our back and we'll see what happens this year. So not to mention a full year with Kevin Durant. Right. Right. Yeah. That's where he was made. He was still injured, right? He didn't even play for Probably a month after the trade. Right. Well, no, he just came off injury. I'd say probably when they acquired him, I would say he didn't start for maybe like a week and a half after we acquired him. So as we transition out of the NBA and go back to dog day summer, which we mentioned earlier, we're off in baseball. And as a Mets fan, we're just off. Uh, we're coming off the U.S. Open. It's weird to say that that is now our third major of the year. <laughs> so weird when it used to be the second <laughs> but uh, pretty weird how the pga tour has done you know their designated events and literally the week after a major which is a grind 
for everybody involved, they have another designated event in Hartford at, for the travelers. I think it's TPC River Highlands. We'll talk about that term in a minute, but something last night when I got back from the concert, I was scrolling through my phone and the SB awards are coming up in a couple of weeks. I think they do it during the all-star break and I'm going through and I'm voting and I'm like, what? And I think I sent it to you right away. I'm like, Michael Block, PGA member, club pro, is a nominee for the best play of the year? What? Dude. What? I instantly got goosebumps because that's just something. Yes, the hole-in-one, like we've mentioned numerous times, that's going to be replayed every year forever. And for that to be a SB nomination, are you kidding me right now? Bro, th- this guy right now, I know people always say, oh, if, you know, if I could be anyone for a day, yo, I don't need no major celebrity. I don't need to be Drake for a day. I don't need to be, you know, Jack Eichel or however you pronounce his name. Yo, can I be Michael Block for a day? Seriously. Dude. This dude. He has everything, everything that I want. He he's the man at his home club. He's gonna everything taken care of. He's gonna be he's a local legend. I mean, he's already a local legend in the SoCal he's, golf he's station been a, anyway. He's been, That's what yeah, I'm saying. But no, but like there's legend and then there's like uh, like yeah, he's on rarefied air right now. You know, you know where I would put him right now. Oh, oh, and this is and this is ooh. not planned. And this is shame on me because I can't think of the guy's name. And I'm going to have to literally Google it right now as I'm talking to you, but I'm oh, not going to. Maybe you can say it and I'll it. get it right. <laughs> There's no chance you get this right. <laughs> I, and if you got this right, if you got this right, I would never make you smack yourself in the face ever again on this podcast. That's how confident oh, I am. Oh, I oh, oh, give me a chance then. What? What's the question? Mm-mm. You have to show me your hands so I know you don't Google it. Will Ferrell. Oh, wait, where's the camera? I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> I'm not even going to ask it. I'm not even going to ask it. Because hey, 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 Siri, what's the... Stop it. Oh, God dang it. I just Googled it. How did I forget? Oh, my God. <laughs> Smack myself. You're welcome. Uh, we didn't hear that. Oh, well, I'm not doing it again because that was the hardest one I ever did on the show. So. (laughs) Bullshit. Okay. The legend of all legends in the PGA of America. The the guy that always was talked about as the best head pro, you know, the man that everybody strived to be was none other than the legend of Bob Ford. Yeah. And Bob Ford was the longtime head pro of where Graham. And this is why I was so confident that I would never make you smack yourself in the face again. Cause you're not even going to tell me that. So how are you going to pick out the man's name? Show me your hands. Cause I don't want you to Google this. You have 10 seconds. Show me your hands. Graham. Yo, can I get the, Anyhow, <laughs> Bob Ford, Bob Ford was a legendary head pro at Oakmont. Ah, uh- Right outside of Pittsburgh. Name sounds only, so familiar too when you say yeah, it. I like, oh. I'm so bitter, dude. I had to Google that. I mean, that's why I smacked myself. Bob Ford made the cut at at Oakmont in the U.S. Open at his own course. <laughs> Legendary status, right? Is that uh, any good? Yeah. And as we all know, Oakmont is a Northern States course. So in the in the winter, he would go down to Seminole, and he was the head pro at Seminole, where all the tour players are. And finally, yeah, finally, three or four years ago, actually, I think when DJ won the U.S. Open at Oakmont, that was his last year. And they had their first assistant, Dylan G, was already named and voted on as his predecessor. Wow. So I'm putting Michael Block almost in that status as Bob Ford for the things that he's done. He's I mean, not there. Oakmont to Seminole? Yeah. Yeah. Those are 
Yeah. I mean, look. I, I, tomato, I get what you say. Tomato, saying. tomato. Tomato, tomato. Dude, when right. Jim Nance gives you the... Would you, I can't. I just... Yeah. We've already the beaten open that invite. Horse. The open yeah, invite. Yeah, the open invite to the house at Pebble. I mean, everyone's eating out the palm of his hands. I mean, that dude... Not that he couldn't use his privileges anywhere, but that dude could go to any golf course right now and just right. be like, you, mm-hmm. you, you, you got an extra spot? You the good? funny thing is, the funny thing is that you said that he could have done that before his performance in the PGA. No, I'm not saying he couldn't. I'm just no, saying, I, I, I'm just saying like the, but, av- like the regular person, right? He, like he could have been getting out of his car getting his clubs and taking them up to the clubhouse. And they would have been like, I know you, guy. you're coming with me. You're not paying a yeah. lick. We're getting sauced and we're going to have a great time. They showed him, they showed him last week at LA country club as a spectator, like yourself yeah. walking around, walking around the venue. And they showed him just signing autographs all day long. Of course, he's not there on the day I was there. No, he was there Thursday through Sunday. <laughs> and here's a, a club pro that is signing autographs. Not only that, he's a nominee for an ESPY award. Bro, I... And just I tell you one thing. If I... Go ahead, say it. And just signed an endorsement deal with Michelob Ultra. Dude, I'm going to tell you something right now. And this is the God honest truth. I got a flag. I only got one signature on it. I'm cool with it. I'm happy. I wanted this dude. I've wanted this kid's signature for a long time. I got Ricky Fowler's signature. I'm super happy. Yeah. If I could have got any, if I wouldn't have got his, the only other one I would have got, dude, if Block was there, I'd have been like, yo, here's my flag. Sign that. Out of 100,000%, right. yo, sign the flag. Dude. And then I'd have been like, yo. See- you you know my boy Scott Wasco? Did you did you see on his Instagram this past week that hmm. a volunteer from the course where he made the hole in one? Yeah, literally sent him his divot from the hole in one in the mail. <laughs> like, what? He put it up. Block had it on his Instagram. He goes, "Look what I just got in the mail." The volunteer <laughs> grabbed my divot, put it in a Ziploc bag. And send it to so, him. So, does he have a special flower bed that he's saving that? <laughs> like I at his house? Dude, I don't know. But Hey, like we like we said, that him hitting that shot will be played every year mm-hmm. until the end of time. That they stop doing promos for the PGA. Like, guaranteed. And that'll, so, and that'll kudos never to happen. him. <laughs> and that'll yeah. never happen. So, oh, right. One more thing before we get into the travelers, our boy Jerry Kroll, our listeners know him as BT, my fellow Vegas Knights fan. We became fans at the same second at Goose Creek. He's on the bag in the U.S. Senior Open this week in Wisconsin. That he is. You sent His, me some uh, some videos. Those yeah. are whew. His boss whew. slash owner of the course he works at, Goose Creek was in a playoff two people for one spot in a qualifier didn't get through became alternate and he was i think fifth alternate after all qualifying and basically as of this past i think wednesday or thursday was officially in the event so our boy jerry got on a plane yesterday left southern california went to the land of cows in wisconsin and uh, (laughs) he's on the bag and like you said the videos he sent, I mean, Ross's wife was walking through the rough and he's like, I can't even see her shoes. And I'm like, oh boy, have fun, old guys. <laughs> was, did did BT, did he notice any, were there any Badger warnings? No, or Badger, sightings? Knows, Badger knows he's there. <laughs> I've been in a group thread and they've been talking about old fashions and spotted cow and all the Wisconsin things. But hey, you better tell BT before he leaves. Got to get those cheese curds. I'm telling you, if he hasn't tried them, I know, overrated. I know, folks. Overrated. Get the bleep out of here. 
for a large man yourself telling me that you get the get out of overrated, here. Overrated, dude. Overrated. No, what's but, overrated hey, is best of luck to uh, Ross Fisher, not the Ross Fisher from England, but the Ross Fisher from Goose Creek Golf Club and my boy Jerry Kroll. Get it done. Become the second legend of Southern California. In the let's go. Way. You know, let's go, Ross. I mean, be the guy. Jerry did send me a video of a 506 yard par four. So have fun hitting driver, driver in there, Ross. <laughs> Got to throw you a little, you know, jab there. <laughs> but, uh, you know, best of luck. You guys Yo. have fun. <laughs> Since you said this, and sorry, this is just a quick little tangent. I know you don't, and hopefully you will since we, you know, since we're promoting on, you know, we put this out on YouTube. I was watching this. I've been watching these reels. You've been seeing this kid that's blowing up for, we, we, I think his handle is like driver off the deck. Yeah. You ever he seen lives it? Here, he lives here in Virginia. Are you serious? Yeah. He hit some shots at Greenbrier one day on the range, and then he's Cedar, <laughs> that Cedar, is, yeah, Cedar Point Golf Club in Suffolk about 30 minutes from where i live right now it was actually cedar point of my first job ever he plays out wow i can't believe you did that wow that's yeah that was completely unplanned yeah Yeah, Yeah, dude dude, that dude he's just like following i don't follow him but i've heard of him and i've seen some of his videos so when you get done send me something on instagram so i can start following him but yeah he lives yeah no i definitely will and everybody talks about him a lot Oh, so he got swag. I'll give it to him. Yeah, but Ross, <laughs> he got best it. of luck to you, dude. Hope you pull the Michael Block for the U.S. Senior Open. You know, go Cheers beat up that. one of the old guys. You know, bring that Riverside swag. And by Riverside swag, one of the greatest movies of all time, Boys in the Hood, one of the greatest lines of it was, and you're going to have to bleep this out, Riverside mother beep! <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, dude... <laughs> Travelers Championship. <laughs> Amazing field. All I can say is you've been saying this for months about Scotty. All I do is come in the top 10 Shuffler. <laughs> what have you been calling him for the last? The White Tiger. I've been calling him the White Tiger. Dude. I, I, you ain't wrong. This, this stretch he's on right now is shit we haven't seen since tiger granted he's not winning all these events but he's coming pretty damn close oh i'm sorry would you have any problem coming in the top five or coming in the top 10 of almost every event that you've played in this year and maybe you may have not have got a w this year but you know you're still gonna take home he did i'm just saying i'm just gonna say right now you're asking me if I would wouldn't mind coming in the top five. I wouldn't <laughs> mind coming in the top thirty every week. I mean, let's. That's still like, a pretty good list. <laughs> yeah, I that's mean, what I'm saying. I was like, can I just make the cut? <laughs> that's still a pretty amazing living. I'm yeah. Gonna... Right. No. Yeah. Facts. Facts. Mm-hmm. I like. I. I. But I sent you a stat the other day after he shot 63. I think he shot 63 in the second round. Yeah. I. I don't know. And it said he's now 203 under par for the 2023 season. 48 shots better than anyone else. Hmm. What's your, what's your saying? Hmm. Is that any good? (laughs) No, before you even say that, doesn't that kind of sound like the stat Tiger Woods had back in the early 2000s with all of his? I mean, just his major stat. I that's mean, what I'm I, like. Yeah. This... And that's only for a year. Not 2023 season. And what is this guy, 27? <sighs> Don't 28? care. Don't care. No, guy. I'm just saying in the sense that, like, mm-hmm. you know, he's young and he'll be around. Yeah. You know, that's that's why I'm saying it. Like, yep. he's... But, I. Uh... But, dude, our boy, you know... R squared and Fowler last week tied for fifth travel across the country, you know, go to Hartford elevated event, got to play shoots, even par 
round one, you're like, oh god, they're like lighting this course up. Is homeboy gonna have a you know a bad round, you know, a bad Quick tournament out, after? Yeah. yeah, and the whole world's going, yeah, 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 it's not gonna happen. And then Fowler goes, all right, hold my beer, I'm gonna shoot 65 on Friday and make the cut. And he's still way back, right? But whatever, shot 65, 500, made the cut. Then yesterday, third round, we call it what? Moving day, right? What are you doing? Hold my beer again. Yeah. And Fowler, <laughs> I'm not even watching. We're doing errands. And my dad sends me a text. Holy shit. Look what Fowler's doing. And I pull it up and I'm like, oh my. My guy's on yeah. 59 watch. <laughs> yeah. And literally had a chip for 59 on his 18th hole yesterday, which was number nine. And it was a little touchy chip and left it, you know, short, whatever, kick in, no stress par to throw a little 60 at him. <laughs> Lowest round in a tournament on the PGA tour. And I don't know if you saw what they asked him in his press conference and they were like, is that oh, the lowest God, this round? Should be good. Is that the lowest round you've ever shot? And he goes, no, I shot 59 once. And he goes, and I was grinding because I was playing with Rom and Rom shot 60 and I only beat him by one. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit. Can you imagine <laughs> you out and throw a 59 on the board and only win by one? <laughs> I just like how you set that up. He said, he's like, yeah, I was grinding. What? <laughs> like, yeah, no one says that. I'm <sighs> grinding to, to shoot par. Not grinding to shoot, Graham. Ten under. Let's let's. Not be. me, M M okay. M. Not okay. me. Okay. I mean, hey, hey, okay. hey. I was getting ready to be like you're hey. grinding. Hey, hey bro, I've seen your scorecards the last couple of rounds. Let's calm down over here. <laughs> yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I'm trying to get my <laughs> index to a five point five, bro, so I can go to Greenbrier Country Club member guest. <laughs> me and my boy Davern. <laughs> I got to get that shit up. <laughs> Because, because, hey, what, what, what are you gonna do at that tournament? We're not even going there. Uh, no, I was just gonna. Say, I just wanted to hear the st your sick man quote. Oh, we're gonna lay the wood or some. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I wanted. <laughs> That's yeah. all I wanted. <laughs> Anyhow, Badger, Badger, our boy, yesterday texted us in the group thread, and he's like, "Look at this round going." with the, what he has called them now, Ricky and Ricky, the Murrieta wrecking crew. Love it. Right. Dominating dude. Moving Domination in the right direction. Like we said last week, the guy's starting to play golf. It ain't about making cuts anymore. It's about finishes. Facts. I mean, this tournament they played this week was a birdie fest, obviously. I mean, a million under par wins and not sure if you saw what Rory said afterwards, he goes, technology <laughs> this should be good well he's just said and he's right he goes technology and the players workouts have outdated this golf course and he's not wrong it's a shorter golf course and so you know, is this a conversation i don't even know if have we whoa excuse me have we even brought it up on the podcast officially have we talked about the whole uh, golf ball thing yeah, deflating the golf ball. We have situation. We have, but that's a discussion for another time because yeah. That, no, I mean I wasn't trying to get into it. I was just saying yeah. like if that was, you know. Yeah. Well, hey, look, everyone was up in arms after last week, people being at 10 under after after the second round of the US Open. And then now the following week they're throwing everyone's throwing darts. Dude, on quote unquote moving day, the average yeah. score had was minus four. That's ridiculous. That's insane. What? Yeah. <laughs> like, and as you're saying that, you know, I have to back this up and I have to look, even if you have to pause and edit this. No, no, what, we're good. Because of what Rory said, I got to see. I don't want to quote this yet, but. Uh oh. I, I'm. Da, da, da. This is one of the shortest, if not shortest courses that they've played this year. And I don't even think – I'm not going to be able to find it, dude. Whatever. I don't even think it's 7,000 yards. Oh, I was just going to say it. Was it even 7,000? Dude, these tour players, like, if it's not yeah. 
dude if it's not 7500 they're just like oh is this yeah is this i don't anything? think it's i don't think it's you know i don't think it's that but whatever the real story of this weekend was the winner hey back back in his home his home area connecticut yeah. finally getting the dub look this is the first time since i saw it earlier this is the first time he's he's had a multi win season since 2011 i've always liked keegan bradley yeah mainly because his swag dude right his his jordan shoes that he has on dude i mentioned it to you when i saw him when i walked when when i was at the waste management back in like 18 or 19 and i took and i saw those jordan golf shoes for the first time and i was like oh daddy likes yeah and but he's a he's a jordan athlete yeah no he is yeah and one of the funniest things I've ever seen, you've probably seen the meme little thing Keegan said, he's playing with Jordan down at Jordan's club. And, you know, he rips one 40, 50 yards past Jordan. And he's talking shit. And Jordan looks at him and he goes, Hey, whose shoes are you wearing? <laughs> and he goes, you're not wearing air Keegan's to so shut up. I mean, playing the man at his own golf course that sets up to his game. We know right? what you're doing there, Jordan. We know what you're doing. And he and he said, I listened to the press conference afterwards, and this is pretty cool because Keegan's from Vermont, and he's a big New England sports guy. You know, Red Sox. Yeah. You know, Patriots, whom I'm Celtics, and his choking Bruins. I had to throw that in there. But he said <laughs> in his press conference, they were like, "Who's the?" how many texts have you gotten and who's the coolest one you've gotten it from? And he goes, obviously Jordan texted him. He's a Jordan athlete. Jordan's one of his boys. And he goes, I even got a text from Aaron Rodgers, which used to be cool, but now he's a Jets quarterback. So it's not too cool anymore. And I was like, damn, that is legit. How good is that? What? How cool is that? (laughs) I was like, that's super cool. But yeah, you were a hundred percent right, dude. When Keegan busted on the scene and won, he won the PGA Championship, I think. Yeah, like his first win, right? Yeah. Well, when he busted on the scene and then made the Ryder Cup team in his early years, I remember telling somebody at Champions Club, whether it be Tyler, Bear, or yeah. who, I remember saying. This guy is going to be what Sergio and what Ian Poulter and Colin Montgomery are to the European Ryder Cup team for the United States team for a while. He was. He was. And he he's had put, that, I mean, yeah. He had that, you know, that Ryder Cup swag, that whatever, mm-hmm. I'm going to make this putt. But then what happened? They banned the belly putter. And That's right. My guy was a belly putter forever. And. It him took and him out. Adam Scott. Yeah, it took him out for a while, and now he's finally getting it back. And here's a funny, funny stat or funny, you know, just thing to say. After last week, and our boy Romano, after Romano showed Fowler his putter, Fowler was like, "I want this putter, right? This right. first the jailbird." You saw the thing, and then a oh, random, a random round of golf with Wyndham Clark. Wyndham Clark hit a putt with it and was like, holy shit, I want this putter. So the last group in the U.S. Open last week was putting with his putter because of our boy, Romano. Yeah. So fast forward to exactly a week later. So do you know what putter won today that Keegan was using? I mean, if we're... <laughs> You're only setting it up to to say, oh, I don't know, maybe the same one our boy yeah. Ricky Romano recommended. Yeah, but he didn't have the long he didn't have the long grip though. Don't care. <laughs> I like like the long grip, but I don't know. yeah, I mean, I was talking to our Callaway rep last week after the U.S. Open, and he was like, "Dude, that putter on eBay on Thursday." Oh, dude. I saw, I saw, was I bucks. saw that on Facebook Sunday, did a post on that <laughs> Sunday yeah. afternoon, 1700 dude, you couldn't, you not only did the price go up, 
you couldn't even find the club anywhere. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Anywhere. So tonight after Keegan won with it, Odyssey throws something out on their Instagram. The jailbird just can't be contained. And the people have spoken. Pre-orders coming this week for the hottest putter on tour. Hey, strike while the iron's hot, right? You don't remember this, and I barely remember this. But in 1986, when Jack won the, mm-hmm. the Masters, the call heard around the world. Are you oh, kidding me? Oh, when I was me? three? Yeah. Jack used this massive McGregor putter that was, like, literally massive. Like, huge. Okay. And everybody in the world wanted it. My dad even had it. This, it was a blade putter. And this thing was, it was a blade that was literally, I mean, it was massive. But same kind of thing going on right now. But Keegan Bradley, way to win, dude, in your home area. I know you're from Vermont. Pretty cool. But as we end tonight, our last segment is something that my dad actually brought up to me friday night when i was on the phone with him and that is have you looked at the Ryder cup standings lately as a matter of fact yes i have it's not i mean oh before i say this how about this does anything surprise you yeah oh the only the only that thing, first the only thing that surprises me is Who's number two and guaranteed to be on the team? Well, I mean, and I'm not saying that it's, I'm not saying that it surprises me because of what he's done. It surprises me that he's number two in the points. I mean, when you win an elevated event and then you win the U S open, I, pretty amazing, dude. And and folks, if if you're wondering, number two and number two in points, Wyndham Clark, U.S. Open winner, he's been consistent these last six months, yeah. and that's what golf's all about is being consistent. And if he keep playing like the way he's playing, yeah, let's go, be the team. It's wild. He's guaranteed to be on the team. Like he's on. That's he's on. So dude. awesome. It's so. I mean. I mean I'm, how cool is that for him? I can't even like. Nobody I, knew his name a month and a half ago before he won at Wells Fargo. Facts. <laughs> I mean, facts. I mean, some people did. You, but, you. But still, the average, average. Yeah, fan. even even the average fan, dude. Hey. If 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 he plays anywhere to what he did at the open and these other events, then yeah, then then we're looking good. And hey, we need to find some so, wood around here so I don't jinx ourselves. Right. So go but, through it. You know, go through it after today's all right. event. Go through. You know, number one through six are guaranteed on the team from points. And then all right, one through six, Zach, Zach Johnson gets six captain choices. All right, so one through six. I mean, do we even need to say who number one is, or is it just so obvious? No, no, just skip to three because we know <laughs> yeah. one, and we just talked about two. So, <laughs> aka, oh, the White Tiger, aka Scotty Scheffler, number one. We got Wyndham Clark, and then, hey, I love seeing this because I'm glad this controversy is almost over, or whatever the situation is. But in number three, Brooks Kepka, four spot, we got Xander Shoffley. Then we got Cantlay. And Max Homa. And then the crazy thing is, is because you said it's the first six. Who's in seventh? Who just showed up? Oh, yeah. how about Mr. I just won today, Keegan Bradley. And dude, he's actually been playing well mm-hmm. all year. And it's crazy to say this because the golf season starts the previous, like, yeah, how they changed the golf season. Like, it doesn't seem like it's almost at the end. Like, I'm like, wait, what? So, yeah, it's, it's but close, he's, he's been playing well all year, all golf Absolutely. year. And honestly, he a hundred percent deserves to make it. Then in the eighth spot, we got Jordan Spieth, nine, Cam Young, 10, Sam Burns, 11, Justin Thomas. We got Colin Marikawa in 12th, 13th. We got Denny McCarthy. Then we got Kurt 
Kitayama. Kitayama. Yeah. All right. And then Will Zalatoris, Ricky Fowler, Harris English, Tony Fee now, Chris Kirk, and Sahith Tagala. Thank you. I was going to get that. I. <laughs> You know what, dude? I got something. The only for reason, you. the only reason I got it is because he's from Southern California, played at Pepperdine, <laughs> and practices out at Goose Creek. That's the only reason. Well, I, I mean, he also was on the uh, the Netflix yeah, show he was. too. He was. So, but what sticks out to you, dude? Like, if you're Zach Zach Thomas, and the, at the end of the year, these are your points. This is it. Wait, this who? The, or Zach Johnson? Sorry. Smack again. I was like, like, wait, what did you just sorry. say? Sorry. If you're the cat, I just see that's how I am. I voluntarily smack. Myself. Oh, get the like, bleep I don't out of here. Beg. Um, wow. who are you going with as your captain's picks? Um, that's your if that's your one through six automatic on the team. Who's your next? I'm just six? looking at this right now. For sure, Keegan. For sure, Sam Burns. That's two. For sure, Colin Marikawa, three. For sure, Ricky Fowler, four. Fina has been playing great, so that would be five for me. But here's the problem. The problem is, is we're missing out on Jordan Spieth that's in eighth place right now. And then we're also missing out on Thomas. where and Justin Thomas. But the thing is, is both of those guys They're veterans. are great players. They just haven't put it together the last and, i mean not okay let me phrase that i don't want to say it like that it's it's golf right it's hard <laughs> we talked I mean, about it last week it's not for scotty scheffler but for everyone <laughs> i know yeah. i know i'm just saying so in that case uh, because we all know look, the history jordan spieth and justin thomas are partners every right up on the course right and plus how close they are with, with Ricky and, you know, I, it's, who do you, I mean, who do you leave out? I mean, he's would you, out, dude. I, I mean, how do you leave Fino out even though he's playing better? How do you, okay, let me ask you this question. Cause we talked about it last night. You said as of last night, the betting odds USA was what? Minus 170. I think that's what it was. Does that, I mean, I know the answer is no, but does that have any impact on the cho- on the choice of who he wants to bring along? It could be, but looking at our one through six, I'm very happy with who's there. Facts. You know why? Because they are all straight drivers of the golf ball. Yeah. I mean, dude, and, Sam Burns has been playing really well. <laughs> and not only are they straight go- drivers of the golf ball, but they are long straight right. drivers of the golf ball. So, I, I, one through six, I mean, as it is right now, you can't argue with it. I'll take that all day. Seven through 12, it's somebody that's deserving of a spot on the team is going to miss out. I, 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 I mean, honestly, right I would sit, I, dude, I would sit sp- speed. He hasn't done anything. No, he has Jordan, Justin Thomas. Oh, not, him, you know? oh, it's Justin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, speed had those few. Yeah, you're right. No, but, thing about I mean, it. I'm going to probably, and I'm thinking about this as we're talking, go on record and say there is absolutely no way that Justin Thomas is not on that team. Okay. No chance that he's not on that team. I mean, if we just went through the first 12, so does that mean Cam Young's not playing? It's hard to say because he had such a good year last year. I mean, my question is this. Everything is about momentum, right? Would you right. not say? That's what you the, – no. So not with, about, it's 100% about momentum. Okay, so he, that being said. In. Yeah. My, my who's, who's, picks, who's Ricky replacing? Because Ricky's picks. been playing so well. Yeah. 
my captain, obviously you and I are biased. And well, so- yeah, no bias aside what he's been doing the last month and a half, two months. Yeah. Is a hundred percent deserving. Yeah. Yeah. My captain's picks, dude. If I got to pick six, I'm going hundred percent. Like I just said, Justin Thomas is on that team. Spieth is on that team because they're the team that plays in plays together. I'm okay. also going, I'm going Morikawa. Okay. Okay. I'm going, you know, here I only see Homer one pick. dude. I'm going Homer Fowler as my okay. fourth pick. And so then, then who's- and then de- depending on how the end of the season goes, you got to throw Keegan. You got to throw Fino. You got to put Sam Burns in the in it, and you got to put Cam Young. It's two of those. That dude. That's why it's. That's it's why it's hard, tough dude. because Burns, yeah. and Cam Young have been playing better than Spieth and Thomas. Like that's. But they played better last year. Yeah. You know what I mean? And no, but Burns. Is, no, said, Burn, Burns has been momentum. Yeah. You said momentum. And a lot yeah. can happen. I mean, yeah. we're two weeks away from the British Open, or sorry, the Open. And we're right. also in the FedEx Cup playoffs, or in August. Right. So a lot can happen between now and then when the teams are picked. You're right. But as of right now, without all that being said, those are my guys. You know, yeah, Justin Thomas, he's been struggling this year. But... He's hey. that USA guy. No, you need that like has, there's certain veteran. picks. Yeah, there's certain yeah. picks. You need them there for the morale. I'm picking dudes like him. That's why I put Fowler on there. He's been on the team a couple times. Yeah. And well, he also just hurt like and not being yeah. homers. Yeah. Like it's not like he's been playing really good golf these yeah. last six plus and, months. So. I'm also gonna go out, and this might be even a bigger Oh, oh, statement. Then the last one, I'm going to go out on, a, on, and you can write this down, write it down, whatever. Fowler's winning an event before the end of the year. Done. It's coming. So is Christmas, but it's coming. <laughs> but. <laughs> what? Know, you know. If I have to explain myself, it's not very good. Deal. No, I got it. I'm sorry. You just caught me off guard with that. I'm yeah. sorry. So do you even here's a question for you. Show me your hands. Oh God. As we're talking about this, do you know where the Ryder Cup show me your hands? Do you know I, where the Ryder I took a peek? Oh uh, I don't where? know the course. I don't well, know. Well, when I did either. the research, it's it's in Italy. Yeah. All right. Good job, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Denny McCarthy though is right there at 13. Who? Dude, I'm yeah. I've never dude, even these... heard of this guy. The only person I can tell you in the top 16 that's not playing is Will Zalatoris. That's because he's out with an injury. I know. But dude, I mean, to be ranked that high right. and be out How of it because you haven't year? played since last year. Yeah. Or last calendar it's... year. And I'm pretty sure Finau was on the team when they won at Whistling Straits a couple of years ago. Yeah. I mean, there's veterans all around that. But it's, you need that half and half where you got these rookies that are coming out, don't know how big the moment is, and these veterans that can reel them in and be like, yo, bro, simmer down, you know? And that team, that's why one through six is so amazing. Hold on. Can we just we I'm just thinking about this as we're talking about it. Can we just take a moment and acknowledge the names that are not normally there? Like yeah. it's almost the changing of the guard. Oh, you know what I mean? Cha- it was the changing of the guard at Whistling Straits when we blew No, yeah. out of the water. No, I'm not saying we it wasn't. I'm just saying like I'm looking at these names, I'm like, wow. I mean, the oldest person really on here is Keegan Bradley. But, I mean, if my math is correct, I mean, young, young. I mean, they're young. Yeah. I mean, I would say that. So, I'm just, it's just, 
it's so weird not to see a tiger or a Phil or, I mean, yeah, the the names are. I'm just trying to think. It's it, it. You're not wrong. It is the changing dude, and you know a name that we haven't even talked about that was a huge name at Whistling Straits. That's not even on our list. I Dustin Johnson. Where's he at on the rankings? Well, it's, he's lower than 20th. <laughs> right? I, I didn't I didn't see. Well, okay. But how much of his rankings were affected by his previous? Well, he had a shitty year last year before he went. Well, you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Hey, Kepka's where? Number three? Well, I mean, <laughs> he, he did PGA win this and, year. And come in second in the Masters. But. Yeah. Right, I mean, he just. If like Kepka's I said to you last night, team, dude. If Kepka's not on that team, I'm gonna I, be a bitter Betty. I, 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 I mean, I don't want to be a Charles Barkey right here and say I guarantee. <laughs> but if Brooks Kepka is not on is not on this team, you best believe there's going to be some uproar. I mean, yeah. look at all the commentary on the golf channel when, you know, right. after he won and then all that stuff. Like it's, it's, he, dude, you're the number third ranked player. Like there's, at this point, we've already passed. Like we've passed yeah. the hearsay of all the BS. So look, I'm looking forward to it. That being said, I know how important the Ryder Cup is, but folks, if you didn't know, the biggest golf entertainment match of the year is coming up on Thursday. It's not even in the notes. You're welcome. If you don't, if you don't <laughs> bet on Curry and Clay Thompson, to really, win, dude, I haven't seen Clay play, so that's why my only hesitation. If you, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> if so you don't the match. Bet, Played if at the win bet, in Vegas. If you don't bet on Steph and Clay to win over Kermit and Kelsey. Now, how much now that, that I said because that, your hate? How much? No, it's not about hate. It's about Steph missed a cut in a nationwide tour event. Right. Barely. I mean, whatever. Yeah, but they're playing. What are they playing? A best ball? Yeah. Still. Kelsey. I've never seen him swing a club. I haven't seen Kelsey or Clay Thompson swing. That's why I think they're the wild I've card. Clay, I've Mahomes seen Clay is Thompson okay. Swing. Clay, Steph's better than Mahomes, mm -hmm. but I just haven't seen how bad, not how bad, but I just I haven't seen how Kelsey has played. And like I said, I haven't played, either. So I just I've so. seen Clay. I've seen Clay play. In fact, I've seen him play from the group right behind me. Oh, one time. No and? funny story. You were ready for a funny story? No, have I told this story? story. Have I told I, this story before? I don't know. It's not sounding familiar. So, a week <laughs> after the Warriors won the NBA championship, I went to Orange County because it was my boy's birthday, another PGA professional, and we were playing golf. And I pull up, we hung out at his house the night before. It's his birthday. He lives right on the ocean. We drank, you know, I'm not a wine drinker. We drank a bunch of wine. And I'm like, bro, I'm leaving early. I got to go get some Starbucks and I got to get some grease because I'm a little hungover. And he's like, all right, cool. I'm going to get the course. <laughs> so I go do that. I park. There's nobody at the club. And all of a sudden, this massive Ford Raptor like backs in right beside me. There's like, Nobody in what? The they have to pick they have to pick the parking spot right beside me. And I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like <laughs> I'm like struggle bus. And I get out and I'm putting my shoes on. And who gets out of the the Ford Raptor? Ryan Sheckler, the skateboarding dude. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, the skateboarding guy. And I'm like, oh damn. I'm like being a dick as he's like parking, like, really? The only park, whatever. You get it. So yeah. I'm on the putting green waiting for my boy to show up and he finally shows up and Sheckler's on the putting green and my boy and Sheckler start talking like they know each other. Right. And 
all of a sudden, here comes this massive human being, a.k.a. Clay Thompson, walking towards the putting green. Yeah, and this is the week nine. after they won. Yeah, after they won the NBA championship. And Randy Sheckler goes, hey, y'all have four? Like, y'all should play with us. And I'm like, oh, man, are you kidding me? Like, why do we have to have two other people? We could have been playing with Sheckler and Clay Thompson. And Sheckler goes to Randy, he goes, yeah, man, your boy that you had just introduced me to, Scott, he, like, gave me attitude when I was parking by him. And I'm like, oh, my God, like, seriously. Yeah, it calls me out on it on the putting green. And I'm like, well, dude, there's Let's 100 go. I'm like, there's a hundred parking spots open and you pick the one right beside me. Like, seriously. <laughs> so <laughs> you're anyhow, that guy that's like, I'm gonna yeah. park way yeah. over there. <laughs> so anyway, here comes Clay Thompson entering the putting green conversation. And Sheffler right. goes to my boy Randy, he goes, Have you ever met Clay Thompson? My boy, we're playing. And I'm like, Oh my gosh, dude. And he introduced and Randy introduced, I go to shake his hand, and Clay Thompson looks at me and goes, Bro. I can't shake your hand. And I'm like, what? Is he like a germaphobe or what? And he goes, I took the biggest dump in the locker room just now. <laughs> and, they didn't, and they didn't have any soap, so I couldn't wash my hands. So he just snuckled me. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, my God, did that just happen? <laughs> it was so funny. It was amazing. I Yeah, that's I've not heard that one. <laughs> Kudos to Clay Thompson for not letting me shake his hand after he just wiped his ass. So, <laughs> but anyhow, I watched him play in the group in front of him all day. Oh and God, the guy's got great. game. And I can promise you right now, he's he's got more game than Kelsey. All right. So, so are we taking a friendly or what? Oh, you want to take Kermit and Kelsey? You know, let's make it, you know. So let's make it fun for the podcast. I could care less either way, but I could too. But <laughs> well, perfect segue. Last topic of the night, and it's titled "Because Who Cares." I don't anymore. <laughs> uh, yeah, those hundred and sixty-two games. Let's cut sixty and call it a day. Anyway, yesterday, let's just cut them, let's just cut them all and call the Mets a loss this year. And let's, <laughs> we'll see you in twenty twenty-four. Thanks, Unfortunately, thanks Uncle Stevie Cohen. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Say, oh, you're not going to save it for the rant? No. No kick oh. rocks tonight. No kick. All rocks right, tonight. all right. Well, they're kicking rocks, but just not officially yeah. tonight. Oh, they're kicking a lot um, more than rocks. <laughs> <laughs> so, stat of the weekend because no one cares. So apparently, there was a game in Colorado. The Rockies, I believe they're called. They played the Anaheim Angels, and oh, wait after a th- they're not the Anaheim Angels anymore. Well, you know what? It's Anaheim the Los Angeles Angels, the Angels of it's, Anaheim. I know, I know, I know. It's stupid. That's why you're not smacking yourself. I'm it's pardoning you from that. Here, uh, yeah, I'll give you a little half. Deserve, it doesn't even deserve that. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. I don't know. How about after four innings, the Angels scored twenty three runs. What? Yeah. The best part is that the score was 25 to 1. <laughs> it ended, but they scored 13 in the third and then 8 in the fourth. What? Yeah. That's why it's what? a segment of who cares. <laughs> Graham, so about those Mets. <laughs> Graham, somehow the connection, I'm losing it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> As we wrap up tonight, oh, wait. great night. And to those that follow us on YouTube, just want to point out something behind me for the first time ever. That is. That oh, that, okay. Flag right you took there. the words right out of my mouth. I was like, wow, you haven't mentioned anything about. All right. I mean, I was saving it. You, you see that? Oh, man. That's, that's what makes me forget about the Metropolitans right there. That banner. Oh, baby. <laughs> to quote my boy, Biz Marquee, Oh, baby, you. You got what I got need. What I need. <laughs> there we go. Another singing moment. And Graham even joined in tonight. Folks, thanks for following us. We love you all. Sorry there was no Kick Rock segment tonight. We're not going to do those every week just because too much pressure on your boy. 
but I will go ahead and <laughs> give you next week's kick rock segment. Mets. The Mets. Just, just sell. <laughs> oh my God. Sell. 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 <laughs> that being said, Scott, it's always a pleasure. And dude, what, it just keeps getting better and better. I can see your I, I can see your big dome. Or no, I'm gonna rephrase that. I can see your your bright, beautiful face. I can finally see I got the Tomlin jersey in the background. You know, you sound amazing. I don't know what you did differently, but you sound great. LT. I'm yeah, I'm I, I mentioned LT. I wish you could guys could read that because it says 2006 MVP. It doesn't say choked in the playoffs. Thanks, Marlon McCree, for not falling on the bubble, <laughs> but or the interception. But it doesn't say that. We're not going to say that because that would be another hour episode. But <laughs> not... Anyhow, dude, we have way too you. much fun doing this. <laughs> That's why we do it, dude. So, what I'm saying before we get off air. Last week, everybody knows I've been calling out beating the bookie, you know, for talking shit and blah, 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 blah. We've been tagging him in our Instagram post. And he finally hey. decided to respond. And he responded and made it quiet for everybody else. And <laughs> I think he said something to the fact of, don't quote me. You two are a bunch of nerds. Nobody follows you but your family. And you know what? Beating the bookie. I don't care. Graham and I don't care. We started this thing because of our love of sports and because our friendship. And we said it episode one. We're doing this because we love sports and because we're boys and it gives us more time to hang out and talk when I live in Virginia and he lives in L.A. So the fact that you said family and friends are the only ones that follow you. Perfect. You know yeah. I mean? Like that's who I want to follow us. Don't care, bro. Don't care. <laughs> so come at me with something bigger than that. You know, I wasn't going into this, but I am now kick rocks. Let's go. I'm sorry. You're still bitter about your Panthers getting smoked in the Stanley cup finals. I'm sorry about your <laughs> lock of the year in baseball last night when Tampa Bay Devil Rays over four and a half runs against the Yankees. Oh, lock of the year. If it's a 10 unit max play. Oh, what was the final score? Oh, Tampa scored four in the first two innings and then they lost <laughs> nine to four. Oh, sorry. Bad beat. Oh, don't care. Kick rocks. You know, I mean, and then you post something today. Oh, I'm going on a cruise and I can't get out of the port because there's a barge in the way. Oh, hashtag didn't ask. You know? <laughs> it is what it is, bro. You know, call me a nerd all you want. I don't care. I got more knowledge than you and your dumbass beating the bookie max plays. I mean, come on, bro. <laughs> don't even come at me with this. You're biased as shit. You and Brooks Kepka, I mean, I'm going to keep this PG-13, so I'm not even going there. But it is what it is. You know, you, you talk shit on Jim Nance. That was the deal breaker for me. And folks, to be fair, and I even brought this with Scott off air. I said to him, I'm like, bro, especially after like you showed me the comment that, you know, that he left, I said to myself, I'm like, didn't you just like used to follow him and like everything was all good. Like you were happy about like, you know, like you enjoyed following this guy and then everything was all good. I was like, what happened? And there's like, he well, he this talks shit like, on Vegas. yeah, no, I, I know exactly what it was. I was just like, we're going straight. We're going straight. And then all of a sudden direct left turn. I was like, Oh, okay. There he started. He started talking fan ball. He did. Hey, we don't talk fan ball. And to well, quote Vincey Glenn, but... and to quote Vincey Glenn, when you're ready to talk football, we'll talk football. But when you're talking fan ball, I ain't talking to you. And beating hey, the bookie, that's... that's from episode one. You should probably learn something from Vincey Glenn. You know what else you should learn from Vincey Glenn? He's the only defensive back in the history of the NFL to pick Brett Favre off four times in one game. How's that for fan ball, you mother? Beep!
<laughs> Send us out of here, G Money. Hey, as the best homie always says, Bubba. Good night. Ass hat. <laughs> That's not what Jim Nance says, but we'll deal with it. Let's oh, go. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs>This episode of the Ball Guys on the Bench podcast is brought to you by our friends at North Star Credit Union and Southern Auto, located in Southeast Virginia.